This is the biggest Necromancer update ever. You might want to sit down for this one because it's simply incredible. During the Vessel of Hatred campfire chat, they dropped an absolute bomb about Summoner Necromancer. Number one, our key passive, Kellen's Edict, is finally useful. Previously, it said your minions gain 3% attack speed for each active minion. Actually useless because you're getting attack speed from all the other sources. Now it says your minions gain 3% attack speed and deal 3% more damage increased for each active minion. 33% attack speed, 33% more damage, multiplicative on top. That's not the biggest update though. This is literally nice, but it ties super good in in the actual bomb they dropped. And that is that Ring of Mendeln, Shade Mist aspect, and the new aspect of the Fell Gluttony. Everything that essentially has our minions deal bonus damage. This damage now scales not with us, it scales with the minion damage bonus. Now let me explain how this formally worked and why it is so incredible. Let's take a peek at the Ring of Mendeln here. Every sixth attack from each minion is empowered, exploding for 26,000 physical damage. If you now would like to increase this damage, surely if I put three points into Skeletal Warrior Mastery, that's going to multiply up the Ring of Mendeln. But that's not the case. The only way to upgrade the damage from Ring of Mendeln used to be to upgrade my own damage. Taking the Ring of Starless Skies, getting 50% more damage, well, that actually boosts the Ring of Mendeln. Or using the Flesh Eater Paragon Note to get another 40% more damage, that would also increase the Ring of Mendeln. So if I increase my damage, then this item would allow my minions to do more damage. With this latest update now, that the Ring of Mendeln, the Shade Mist Aspect, and Felgaltony scale with our minions, it truly scales with our minions. Three points into scale to Warrior Mastery, it's another 45% more damage to the Ring of Mendeln damage. Why the Ring of Mendeln itself has scale to Warrior Mastery, Mage Mastery, Golem Mastery? That is even more, so 75% more damage. Same goes for the Mages, 100% more damage. Or for the Golem with 125% more. And not only that, Hellbound Commander giving our minions 30% more damage, as well, Ring of Mendeln. And the Shade Mist aspect, which says your minions deal a thousand damage per second to enemies around them. Well, that one you had to usually update with your own shadow damage stuff. Like the aspect of the Damned here, which makes me deal 50% more shadow damage. And then the Shade Mist aspect would actually do more damage. Nah, -uh, that Shade Mist damage now increases with our minions themselves. And they did another big update because the cold leader paragon node which is essentially all our minion damage that gives us 30 percent more damage for every 20 percent attack speed so another 150 percent more damage if we have the attack speed fully maxed out is now updated to 40 percent more damage yep we went from 150 percent up to 200% increase with cold leader and let's not forget about the golem glyph with a 25 percent increased damage to the golem as we have the new aspect of Fell Gluttony. That one has the Golem bonus explode to do another explosion on top of the actual explosion he's been doing. So it's gonna be like poof, poof. And that Golem, when he does the second explosion, does actually consume corpses. So we get our Skeletal Reapers make corpses for us, have the Golem double explode. And on top, your Golem consumes corpses to reduce its remaining cooldown. <laughs> Well, thank you. We're just getting even more cooldown reduction on top. Let's take a look at all these damage sources together. We have a 75% of the Golem, plus the new Kellen's Edict, which is now 33%. Then you still get your Hellband Commander, and that's another 30%. We get the Cult Leader Node, which is now 200%. And then you get your Army of the Dead with the Army of the Dead Aspect. Yep. That gives, while Army of the Dead is active, your minions gain a 90% increased damage and take 90% reduced damage. That one is buffed in the new season as well. So you get Army of the Dead plus 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 damage. That will then flow into all the others, which will then increase Ring of Mendel as well. You can obviously pick up unique items with then Golem Mastery or an amulet with the Hellbang Commander to increase your damage. Furthermore, that we get more ranks in here and there to actually make this even more deadly. And now with 300 Paragon Points, we can take more additive damage than ever. And they actually wrote that they doubled almost all additive damage bonuses to make them not feel so insignificant. 
which means even more damage. Lastly, let's not forget that Necromancer now gets bonus barrier. How would a Necromancer now look from level 1 to 60, the new 1 to 60, because 60 is max? And you would probably begin with Reeb, and then you could either choose to level with Blight, which very nicely works out for the Blight bonus damage of 20%. You kind of want to level with Sever, because Sever does a lot of damage and get new aspects as well. And you can increase your Sever damage by 2% for each active minion you have. That's just a huge amount of bonus damage out of the house with a nice damage skill that can actually crit as you do want to boost crit damage for your minions to do most damage possible. Have a lucky hit chance to create corpses for your golem. Pick up the one point in corpse explosion and then boost the scale to warrior mastery and have your corpse explosion generate some essence with even more skeletal mage mastery. Then we get the iron maiden into enhanced iron maiden which actually restores Essence for us, while we have the Skeletal Mages during leveling to restore Essence. And we're going to be looking into the Corpse Tendrils to make things vulnerable, which is our skill bar in the beginning look following. We get the Race Skeletons with the Sever onto Corpse Explosion with Corpse Tendrils, the Iron Maiden Curse for Mana, and then also our Reap. The thing is, as soon as we do have level 18, we're able to get the Reapers for the bonus corpses, and we're going to have the Skeletal Mages to actually give us Essence for the time being. And with level 25, we're getting the Blood Golem to go for the Blood Golem Super Boost. And as you get the Golem on level 25, you'll be having to throw out the Reap already for the Golem itself. And that Reap ain't necessary anymore because our Iron Maiden plus the actual cold skeleton mages replenish enough mana as is and with the golem coming at level 25 the same goes for corpse explosion that one we're throwing out of the window for army of the dead and that's how it's rather going to be looking until you hit level 60 because then iron maiden is going to go out as well but let's finish the skill tree here right now as we're going down we're here at the Corpse Trundles together with the Enhanced and the Vulnerable. We talked about that. And we need another four points to actually get down to our Golem. And that's for the sake of leveling. Four points into Sever to crank out the maximum damage with your ability you can. Then we're going to get the points into the Golem Mastery to get that 75% bonus damage with the Army of the Dead. Prime Army of the Dead of the Corpse leaving behind skeletons with them being able to resummon everything as well. Which will then give us more critical strike chance, 30% more damage, Kalen's Edict, and even more critical strike chance. The Death Defense and the Bonded in Essence are still useless. I wouldn't actually put a single point into this as your minions have your armor and that will keep them alive easily. This has us left with 35 skill points and these skill points are going to fill out damage and survival as you can get 15% more armor and that will always be good since we need 2000 armor maximum since on Torment 4 it's going to go down to 1000. Torment 1 is minus 250, Torment 2 is minus 500 until you have minus 1000 armor. So having more is always good while we are fortified we would deal more damage to elites and we can easily get fortified with one single point in necrotic carapace since we're going to be making consistent amounts of bonus corpses with all our skills ergo consistently fortified and good off there is also necrotic fortitude if we then lucky hit we create barrier our sources of lucky hit in this case are sever and the army of the dead itself has a good lucky hit chance to consistently give us this bonus active. And if you feel like you don't have enough lucky hit chance, we can put points into precision decay to just add another 15% like that, which has us still sit with 22 skill points left. And at the point that we reached right now with filling all this out, Sever becomes more and more irrelevant. I would still say though that at level 60, I would swap over to Blight at some point, you can actually keep playing with Sever as we are with this build truly going to boost crit strike, crit damage, crit, 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 crit. The problem is we're not focusing our own damage anymore. No, with the changes to everything, we'll focus on minion damage truly because now an aspect like reanimation, which has our minions do 45% more damage, that one always felt okay, but it wasn't really boosting the Ring of Mandel. Well, these 45% more damage of the aspect of reanimation, which you could then put on your two-handed weapon to actually make it 90%, 
That one straight up boosts the Ring of Mandelm, the Fell Gluttony. All these aspects are getting vastly stronger because of this too, which makes us consider, well, Sever is nice. Don't get me wrong. But at some point around level 60, you're going to yoink these points out and we're going to put them all over to Blight. I'd say level was severed to 60, but then you'd rather want to have Blight with a Blight radius increase, and then you and your minions deal increased damage to enemies within Blight. And that 20% increased damage, since Mandown and so on scales with the minion damage, is then naturally working super well. That gives us Mohood Flash to really make all the corpses, and you want to have Fuel by Death for, again, all the corpses keep at least one point in grim harvest as your golem is consuming corpses too now and that will instantly give us essence to cast more blind the point in corpse explosion won't be needed in the long run since we can consume corpses over our skeleton skill and with a golem explosions more what you might want to consider is still playing blood mist as your oh damn i might need this to survive button technically though we do have the necrotic fortitude now we might not need this, which has our skills post 60 look similar to what we have here right now. Just that Sever would go out for Blight and Iron Maiden would definitely go out for Decrepify for the cooldown reduction. And I think this is what you really want to have. And since the Golem does make us unstoppable, we technically do have our source of unstoppable. We have our source of lucky hit with these three to fuel the Decrepify. We did increase our lucky hit with the precision decay we still have 17 skill points left put these two out of iron maiden put the one into decrepify for the cooldown reduction and the damage reduction then we get even more damage to cursed enemies which is fantastic and since we're throwing out blights we could also consider going for gloom that would increase the shadow damage of our minions now that's a minimal increase still though we're going to be playing in the long run the Reapers for the bonus corpses. We could consider that if we make enough corpses, that the cooldown reduction might be better to truly reduce the cooldown of Army of the Dead and Golem to a point where it's always active. And our Skeleton Mages are going to be the Shadow Mages for the increase of damage. Because if we're all doing 15% more damage, then everything our minions that influences does 15% more damage as well. Fall Gluttony, Shade Mist, and so on. And that still leaves us with six skill points left. It is truly amazing how much you actually got. That is Finality, for example. If we cast our ulti, 15% more damage for eight seconds. Doesn't sound like a lot, but it should be rather easy to pull this off to get that damage increase consistently up is we work with a lot of cooldown reduction. And one thing we should not forget, we can put more points into the skills. Yep, I can put five points into Army of the Dead and they reduce the base cooldown from 70 to 60 seconds. So we can put five points in to get 10 seconds off to 60. Now it's 10 seconds off to 50. Now I'd say five points into Blight is kind of unnecessary as we're not using Blight as a main source. Blight is just literally a lucky hit source to essentially work for us. That gives us the chance to really put all the points into Army of the Dead. And with the last three points, you could get some bonus stagger from the Crippling Darkness. That lucky hit then with our Darkness skills has a chance to bonus stun enemies. It is like a nice to have that you don't necessarily need, but it doesn't hurt. We could improve our movement speed even further, but it doesn't help to kind of run ahead as we still have to wait for our minions to kill things. If you notice that you have enough armor and don't need spiked armor anymore, these are your wiggle points that you can always pull some out of, put some back in. But if you have the armor from spiked armor, you don't have to take care of armor on your gear as much. That brings me to the last two points, either going into Necrotic Carapace for faster fortify if you feel like you don't fast fortify enough. You could put two points into Death Approach to move a bit faster or simply increase your damage reduction with Death Embrace. I think most people are going to say, ha, I want the movement speed and to make it a round one, to put one out of spiked armor and put one in here as well. And that would be then the one and done 60 plus end game kind of way, how I would put the points in there. We tested Sever 
just for you asking why don't play sever until the very last level and it did fall off at some point as it was really nice until torment one until torment two but then it was falling more and more behind the other builds and we do truly want to focus not on our damage in this case we want to have our minions be the sources of damage which really falls down on our aspects. And that is then again, the aspect of reanimation that I would most likely put on my two handed weapon as that 90% damage increase multiplicative really goes crazy with then the amulet having the army of the dead, the unyielding commander that would get, then give us another huge bonus with these two. And we can have the unyielding commander more or less active all the time with enough cooldown reduction. I do believe that the Ring of Mendeln will become mandatory. It is amazing right now with the actual bonus ranks to all the masteries, the bonus attack speed, and then that the physical damage it does does get boosted. We do have the aspect of the Fell Gluttony, which has our Golem then do the double double damage. Good thing is, since we're actually playing the Kalen's Edict key passive, we're getting the 33% bonus attack speed. Then we get the Ring of Mendeln that already has another 12.5% minion attack speed plus. So that's already 50% of the attack speed we need to the 100%. Therefore, we don't actually have to look at Frenzy Den for the bonus attack speed. We're going to get there regardless. Now, if you do not have the gear, you could obviously put on Frenzy Den for the time being. But there are two aspects which are more likely to be interesting. That is either the aspect of the Great Feast, which has our minions deal increased damage, but each one drains an essence from you per second. Now, I really do want to play this, but you kind of end up with zero essence and we can't then play Blight. And since Blight is already 20% more damage, that's half of what the Great Feast does. I kind of feel like I'd rather have Blight and the reanimation on my weapon than the Great Feast, which like sucks out all the essence out of me. And I kind of have to either counterbalance is or not play Blight at all. But then I'm missing out on Lucky Hit for the cooldown reduction. Y you see where my problem there is. So I don't like the Great Feast. We could play the Shade Mist aspect and we truly have to see how much more damage are we getting with all the minion multipliers? Is it worth it to play the Shade Mist as a true insane constant source of damage? Now, the boot's going to be running the Occult Dominion, which does work absolutely fantastic. And we haven't talked about it, but the Bloodgetter's Aspect, which says your Skeletal Priest also empowers you at 75% effectiveness. So the Skeletal Priest gives our minions 30% more damage as we then over summon minions. And if it empowers me, it in a feedback loop empowers the minions again. So th they're going to get damage. I'm going to get damage. They're going to get a few more damage points as well. And on top, the Skeletal Priest would actually heal me if I don't have enough barrier. Now that one would most likely end up on the chest piece if we're not going to play the Tyrells, but we might be able to get our resistance up like that anyways you could also consider moving the aspect of the fell gluttony over to our shade mist aspect so that is now on our gloves forget about the aspect of the fell gluttony and then in the long run we go to play ring of starless skies which gives us attack speed crit chance lucky hit chance that works for everything we do our minions want to have crit chance they want to do as much damage as possible the two core skills is kind of useless but spending your primary resource reduces the resource cost of skills so that we can do more blights to get more lucky hit and the damage increase is also going over to our minions because all the damage increases i get my minions get as well therefore the ring of starless skies should increase the damage of ring of mandel but not because it increases my damage because it increases the minion damage and the minions increase the damage of the ring so that should in a feedback loop technically work and then we get the air of perdition for another 20 percent crit chance lucky hit chance movement speed the two core skills again useless but it would be another 60% damage multiplier. Now, that is a mythical helmet, so maybe we're not going to go for all the mythics here out of the window straight away. Again, the Starless Skies is just a thought, and it could as well be the Shade Mist aspect we talked about. Could think about adding the Hulking, that our Golem gets even more cooldown reduction, and does spawn more corpses, as we want as many corpses as possible for the Fell Gluttony to then reduce the cooldown even more to then hit hard. 
So the hulking aspect might surprisingly be a good choice to play. And then last but not least on the pants, we could be choosing an aspect or on top of the barrier that we are producing, we did used to use temerity, but I don't think temerity is necessary in any way anymore, which gives you the room to think about the tacit of the dawning sky, because that is maximum resistance to all elements and resistance to all elements. The tacit is surprisingly good if you struggle with any kind of resistance thing. If you want to go to torment four, just put on the tacit and you're done realistically though we need the aspect of the hardened bones for the damage reduction as we have some damage reduction on the paragon boards but then together with the aspect of the hardened bones we are more survivally our minions are more survivally that they're just not being nuked in torment 4 into oblivion that's kind of like a good setup i'm looking at here we're gonna have to juggle around the reanimation with the unyielding commander to truly see where it does have the better spot and how exactly all the temperings are going to look because we now have the golem to hit twice chance that's an intriguing one as your golem's base damage is incredibly high he can hit he used to be able to hit for millions now with the stat squish we'll see how much for millions he hits but with a new update to the cult leader node, he does more damage than ever with a new update to his paragon glyph that you can now level up a hundred times uh, he's gonna hit even harder so that golem hit twice might actually be the thing. And then we're mostly looking on every piece for critical strike damage to truly have them critical strike. And on our boots, it would definitely be one's essence per second to really be able to get all the essence per second. And on the chest, it would most likely be essence per second as well, together with golem mastery. Those are the most important things to look for. The gloves do want to have attack speed and the amulet 100% wants to have the hellbent commander. Those are kind of like the main damage scalers that you truly need to look out for to have. I'm going to fill this all out. Don't worry, this is going to be the most comprehensive one you've ever seen. But I just want to give you a feeling for what is it that we're looking for in this case. And then we get the Paragon board, which is now limited to five boards. Yes, you can't be getting more than five boards, but we do have 300 plus points. And in this case, the first things you should always do is get your resistances up. Don't actually look for damage. No, we're looking to get our resistances up that we could then move quickly towards the legendary notes because the legendary notes is where all our damage comes from. Hell, if you start the game, you might as well have the cult leader board turn upside down that you could just with a minimal amount of points work yourself into the cult leader because that will be your biggest damage increase. Obviously, in the long run, you want to have the cult leader board upside down as that is just easier to access. And then you can go from the side. You can be putting in the debt razor glyph and the debt razor glyph will be so important as this does a huge amount of damage reduction and that modifier goes up to 416 percent and the legendary bonus is going to be your minions doing another 20 percent more damage multiplicative so were they going to get damage reduction because they replaced the summon damage here through damage reduction that your minions stay alive and then you can essentially get all your damage reduction and damage modifiers for minions tremendously boosted with that percentage putting it to super ultra s tier and as we're then normally taking our way over to the cold leader note. And the fun part is, yes, we can take the additive damage for the skeletal mages. And we can even take the additive damage for the skeletal warriors up here. Now, while leveling, I would not take these additive damage bonuses straight away. Because you're looking to, matter of fact, level in this case. But what we want to do is we want to take all the damage reduction damage modifiers we can there as a second paragon board you're definitely still looking to get frailty because cursed enemies take 10 percent increased damage from you and your minions yes frailty is frankly spoken insane as you get the 200 percent damage multiplier the 33 percent from Callan's edict and then frailty is adding another 40 percent damage multiplier like this same applies to frailty as for the cult leader board Make it so you actually get into this node the earliest. Ergo, we're going to pick ourselves up the bonus life we have here. And this shadow resistance should be replaced by all resistance. And then we already do have the frailty node. And the frailty board has a really cool thing. And that is attack speed, attack speed, attack speed, and then maximum life. 
and this is a tax free bonus obviously it goes over to your minions as well so factor this in when you're trying to reach that 100 attack speed and the bonus damage to vulnerable is always fantastic plus some more armor as we need to reach that 2000 armor total another glyph would be the eliminator which grants bonus to all normal nodes in range the more intelligence nodes there are in range that's where you can take these two points and the other than the others the better it is for you so get all the intelligence nodes essentially selected that you can in the close vicinity like literally everything and they did change these boards again to add more normal notes and since we pick up all this intelligence we're going to simply boost our all damage and if we boost our all damage we're boosting our minions all damage and our golem is a fixed part of the board as well that means we need another 100 percent damage increase on the golem i might have forgotten to mention this chan but yes the golem itself <laughs> is able to give himself a huge damage increase and and it's it's not a tiny one i mean like we're, we're talking about goddamn a hundred percent more damage plus we're getting all these tiny additive bonus nodes with even more attacks we have 300 points to truly get everything to make our golem just go crazy out of the house we can add the goddamn golem glyph for another 25% more damage. That would obviously not go in here. That goes into a different board as this is not a willpower main. There is some willpower in here. So let's put the golem glyph in for a second. So if you do actually choose all the willpower and they might have changed it a bit to accommodate for even more willpower. Uh, we got 35 only and then we got this. So we 47 is somewhat okay-ish. And this one increases again our golem damage then for every five willpower we're getting 82.4 percent more golem damage as that is 100 levels deep again and increase our minion damage by another 20 percent on top of everything we have already been doing plus there is even more additive damage over on the golem board oh and they changed this huge golem armor increase over to my personal armor increase and my personal resistance to all elements so right here i could make my resistance and my armor bigger because of the golem not the golem anymore that one has changed that would already put us to four boards so we have only one single board left now to take there is a couple of options we could go for blood begets and we could try to get blood orbs don't like it we could go for send of death and get the constant damage reduction from send of death what i think makes the most sense is flesh eater because that gives me the 40% bonus damage and the golem, skeletons, everyone else, the 40% bonus damage. And this one on top has a lot of dexterity going on. And this one on top has a lot of willpower going on. This is a willpower 56 board versus this being a willpower 47 board. So if we're actually transplanting this golem glyph over to the board on the side, like you already got tons of willpower. Or we have to turn the board that we could go in from the bottom. And then if we just choose to take all the willpower straight out of the window without anything else, that's looking already at, and this is going to be in the vicinity, 49 willpower, but it's actually missing that one. So we'd end up at 56 willpower. Boom. There we go. That's even more. And it's like so simple to take while still getting the damage to elites and the bonus damage which then brings us all the way into the flesh eater Ta-da! now we do get more resistance to our elements and max life that we truly just can't die and get all our resistances up with all the intelligence we're taking anyways and here we're now missing a proper glyph but this would most likely go into corporal as this just simply increases physical damage by 20 percent me and my minions do more damage and i get more movement speed plus we're boosting the magic notes ergo this golem damage here <laughs> is going higher than ever and we only have to take 40 intelligence so we can move a lot of points out of all the different things we have taken we can take some rather better passing and still get all the intelligence taken and we have 79 points left to truly just fill out everything we need 
you want to have that little bit more resistance we want to have the minion armor maximum life up here we're going to have more scale to warrior armor we want to have all the damage here we want to have the maximum life down there these 79 points can just fill out every single itty bitty titty more damage while golem is active more armor while golem is active no problem we're obviously going to be taking this one why wouldn't we we're just going to get all our armor so easy without even having to look for our gear to give us armor. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't know what you're thinking, but Summoner Necromancer looks so incredible. I might even skip Spiritborn for this because it has me all kinds of excited. Don't worry, though, for the non-minion enjoyers, this build did not get nerfed, altered, bugged, buffed destroyed in any way it is amazing the spirit wave is going to destroy everything regardless enjoy have a good time take care thanks for watching